atonal and serial passages in Leonard Bernstein's Mass with James Poteet. Many think of Bernstein primarily as a conductor, teacher, or performer. He was, of course, all of these things, and he composed dozens of fascinating works over the course of half a century. Most people are aware of only a few compositions, like West Side Story, that have made their way into wider American culture. Even those familiar with his other works are sometimes surprised to learn how often Bernstein used non-tonal materials and employed modernist techniques when writing music. In this presentation, I'll focus on four sections of Mass that demonstrate well Bernstein's idiosyncratic use of non-tonal materials. Bernstein composed Mass for the opening of the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. in 1971. Mass calls for two orchestras, three choirs, and about 20 vocal soloists and the entire piece lasts approximately one hour and forty minutes. Bernstein uses a dizzying array of styles, including folk, blues, swing, doo-wop, and Broadway. These rub shoulders with operatic and symphonic passages, lullabies, marches, hymns, art songs, fanfares, circus music, and exotic non-Western sounds. Free atonality is the avoidance of traditional tonal materials and implications without using a tone row or other series. Serialism uses an ordered group of tones as source material for a composition. We find both of these in Mass. Epiphany is a pre-recorded section of Mass written for a chamber ensemble of oboe, piano, and percussion. Epiphany is freely atonal and not serial. The opening phrase contains only nine of the twelve chromatic tones, and only eleven appear in the entire piece. Bernstein was well known for his love of wordplay, and these ideas carried over into his compositions. He splices and manipulates the notes of the opening phrase to construct the whole movement. All music even the most serious, thrives on its puns and anagrams. One can almost think of a given piece as a continuing game of anagrams, in which there are twelve letters that can be juggled and rejuggled. It's as if all music were one super game of sonic anagrams. And now we will hear the opening phrase of Epiphany. It has been slowed down for the sake of clarity. Here we have the first two systems of epiphany. This is a good example of how Bernstein recombines notes from the opening phrase to construct subsequent phrases. In the smaller rectangle, we have four chromatically adjacent tones. These same tones are used for the phrases in the larger rectangle. The twelve tones of the Western chromatic scale are referred to as the aggregate, and Bernstein presents three different divisions of the aggregate in the first 43 measures of Confession. First, Bernstein divides the aggregate into four triads, one major, one minor, one augmented, and one diminished. He combines the major and minor triads to create a polychord, then repeats the procedure with the augmented and diminished triads. Next, Bernstein uses whole tone scales which, when taken together, contain all twelve chromatic tones.
Beginning in measure 35, there is a canon for three guitars. Mass contains many canons, but this one is unique. It is marked swinging in 5-4 time and consists entirely of a 12-tone row, the first to appear in Mass. This piece is the second of three meditations in Mass, and it takes the form of a theme and variations. The theme is borrowed from the finale of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Op. 125, specifically Rehearsal R. And what about that sudden awestruck moment of recognizing the divine presence? Fantastic, that passage. It's not Schoenberg, and admittedly, it presents only 11 notes out of the possible 12, but it is a row in the sense that for that brief duration, Beethoven suspends all tonal harmony. That's what makes it so suddenly awesome, unrooted in earth, extraterrestrial. In variations 2 and 4, the notes of the theme appear in dissonant stacks. Both Jack Gottlieb and Alan Shawn liken Bernstein's development of musical materials to a chain reaction. Gottlieb writes, Later elements relate indirectly to earlier ones through a series of linkages each dependent upon a preceding component. The form thus arises out of itself as if containing a self-charging battery. Mass's Credo is an excellent example of this. Credo begins with a 12-tone row and is punctuated by what Bernstein called tropes, songs that give voice to the congregant's frustrations. While each trope is tonal, they all arise from this initial tone row. Set theory allows us to compare directly motives that may at first seem unrelated. Here's a quick rundown of set theory. Groups of notes called sets are defined by their intervallic content. Our ultimate goal is to find the prime form of a set so that we can compare it directly with other sets. Briefly, here are the rules and steps used to find the prime form. Every note or pitch class is assigned a number from 0 to 11. This gives us the raw form of the set. We transpose the set so that it begins with 0. We also rearrange the numbers so that the interval between the outer notes is as small as possible. Last, we pack left. This means we move the smallest intervals to the left side of the set. This may sound complicated at first, but these steps are necessary. Otherwise, sets with identical intervallic content would appear to be different, and comparing them would be more difficult. Let's look at two of the tropes embedded within Credo. 
hurry, and world without end. After finding the prime form of these sets, we can see how the head motive of each trope comes from Kratos' initial tone row. We have focused on Epiphany, the Confession, Meditation Number 2, and the Credo, but you can also find non-tonal materials in Meditation Number 3 and Agnus Dei of the Mass. Though Bernstein strongly identified with the Stravinsky Copeland school, he rejected dogmatic ideology and focused on communication with his audience. For Bernstein, abandoning tonality would mean alienating audiences. He believed that music should not be overly intellectual or mathematical, but accessible. He likened tonality to a covenant of musical communication. Bernstein associated tonality with faith and atonality with loss of faith, tonality with optimism and atonality with pessimism. He used atonality to signify disturbances and negative mental states, and unabashedly employed atonality as a foil to tonality in several works, including Mass. Alan Sean wrote, Bernstein explored an idiom that straddled the line between the tonal and the non-tonal, and in which twelve-tone rows rub shoulders with passages firmly in a key. Bernstein may have felt some pressure to incorporate modernist techniques into his works, but he saw no reason why tonal and atonal music could not coexist. He once said, This so-called conflict between tonality and non-tonality is not a conflict at all, but really a marriage of musical elements. The goal of this presentation was to make you aware of the presence of these atonal and serial passages in Leonard Bernstein's work, and to demonstrate the variety of approaches and techniques used by the composer. We've only scratched the surface, and I hope you will spend more time with this work in the future.